I'm going to be talking about um, some different types of spiritual energies such as the concept of spirit guides and your ancestors. So I'm going to talk a little bit about just kind of what these energies are and working with these energies. Give it a second to load and for some people to find me. We still have a lot of um, energy coming in so it's kind of a crazy energy. So I'm going to kind of do this video and get off of here and do a regular feed, but I want to talk a little bit about um, how to work with different kinds of energies such as these. Um, we can tell that we're kind of going through this spiritual awakening process right now on the planet. So it is kind of affecting things on a lot of dimensional levels. Um, you know, we're beginning to realize that maybe there are other things around us in the spiritual i know not everyone can see these things people tend to perceive things differently so a lot of people begin to first um feel these energies or sense that they're there so i'm going to talk about um just from my experience a little bit about spirit guides we all have them and we have different types of guides that would assist us from the other realm um, i like to think of the other realm as kind of um other dimensions and sometimes we have a hard time accessing these other places with our physical body but as we are going through this ascension process and we're becoming lighter and lighter we're kind of detoxing hopefully we're going up in frequency we're able to perceive much more of the spiritual which is kind of all around us right here i like to think of the other realm is kind of like right here. Um, I kind of have a unique perspective because I'm kind of going through this awakening too and I'm kind of feeling like I'm living in the other realm at times and I'm kind of um, being further removed from like the third dimension and earth as we know it and kind of more and more into these spiritual realms or spiritual dimensions. So we all have guides. I like to think of these as we can think of them more of as a light body, a light being. Um, but they a lot of times can be um, entities and we say entity just to describe any type of like you know anything like that uh, us included people too can be referred to that as you know entities we refer to um, these entities usually didn't have past incarnations here like they literally or they did have past incarnations here they literally would have come here and done the same process and maybe went on to be your guides. We can look at ancestors as guides in that sense too. They're spiritual guides, spirit guides too. Generally, they would have a vested interest in looking after and watching after their descendants in some type of way, right? That's the kind of their family line, their bloodline. Um, so, you know, spirit guides can be come from all different places. They could have had lives here on earth. They may not have. I believe that we would all have one main guide that would have been kind of assigned to us when our soul was first created to um, teach us and to look after us. This would be an entity that would be very involved in planning out your experiences here on earth. You probably would have had assistance in kind of picking out your life path and your soul path and things like that. So we have these different guides. I like to think they're with us all the time. Um, sometimes people are beginning to sense these energies and there's so many energies around us. That's why I kind of want to do a couple of videos so we can talk about different energies that a lot of people are beginning to or have been tuning into and working with um, because the spiritual is just, you know, so, so much, right? So much I thought we could go over some of these things. Um, so you are being guided. A lot of people think that this experience is random and that's why we see so much fear because people have had a lot of kind of bad experiences and they tend to not um, understand the process and tend to kind of you know look at things from a earth kind of perspective and you know kind of forget the process while we're here we're really lucky because once you begin to awaken you begin to remember um, so that's very powerful for us too in us doing our lessons that doesn't mean that you stop getting lessons here because you know as long as you're living in these dimensions you probably stayed here for a reason to assist in some regard no matter where you are in the process so people tend to think this stuff is random once you wake up you do begin to remember that's going to help you immensely because you're probably going to do a better job just navigating your lessons right <laughs> you know dealing with things as they come you're probably going to hopefully stay more 
more positive and kind of get smoother with the things that are thrown at you but you're not doing this alone you have these spirit guides a lot of you guys are seeing synchronicities it's something we talk about almost every day on my videos and um, that goes for number codes if you're seeing three of anything, especially 333 three, three, or and even just three of a number, that's like a sign of the Trinity. It's meant to be a message from your spirit guides too. So you guys are getting a lot of number code synchronicities like 111, right? 222. Two, two. Those are also signs from your guides sending you messages. Um, I am huge on synchronicity. I can always tell that I should pay attention to what I'm talking about if I see a number code. And I'm seeing them all day long on Facebook. Facebook, like I'll see them on you know videos and things like that and this content and so you know if you are getting number codes you should probably stop and think about what you are talking about or focusing on it's probably very important um, so you know we are being guided a lot of times people can sense these energies around us they can either get hot real hot or real cold chills things like that. Some of you guys are getting kind of prickling in your crown. Those are all kind of signs that your spirit guides are trying to get your attention. Sometimes your pets can see these entities around you and it can make your, um, we'll just say your pets, you know, kind of nutty because, you know, it's a way to give you a message also. Um, so, you know, the universe has always been communicating with us and sometimes it's subtle. People want these like big, long kind of, you know, drawn out messages but it's guiding you it's moving you along it's giving you your experiences and you must notice that there is kind of an order to all of this everyone um is kind of convinced the planet's falling apart but it's in divine order always <laughs> so there is a divine order in all of this um these guides these spirit guides would love you so much like they don't have the same human perspective um you know once you understand higher levels of consciousness or leave this experience you understand that there only is love um right there is only oneness and we just have these kind of lessons that we're working on so you are being guided all of the time um a lot of people learn how to communicate with these energies as well we have a lot of kind of um bigger name channelers i guess you could say such as i know david ike um says that he channels his guides and that's where all of his information comes from um, and that's what he describes in a lot of like his work if he's talking about when people ask where his information came from these are you know entities that are here that can give you a lot of guidance and information and um, things like that I want to talk about how people also work with these energies um, I'm gonna go over like ancestors first okay your ancestors this is someone that you've never met it's usually not your grandma or your mom or your dad usually people from a very long time ago that would have some type of connection with you but even though these are people that we haven't met we would have very similar DNA patterns and programs um, to these people we would have also carried on their lessons and their experiences so when you enter into a family line via reincarnation you really are programmed and pick up those kind of things from your DNA until you do it if people can learn how to tap into it and tune into it and change those things, you're probably going to be living very similar patterns or programs um, compared to some ancient person you never ever met, right? Now, our ancestors lived much differently. They lived in peaceful times. They didn't have Facebook. <laughs> they didn't have social media. And they didn't have things like that. But we all kind of know this planet has had its issues for a very long time. But it was a different kind of existence because they were very one with nature. They, you know, their work was to go grow food and to take care of themselves in that kind of regard. And so it was, um, they were much more connected to the elements and understanding the things that we're probably trying to get back into when it comes to, you know, this kind of stuff with nature. Um, so they lived a much different existence, but they would have an interest in what we're doing because even though, you know, these are people that we haven't met, we're coming to heal their lessons from their lives. We came and we kind of stepped into their karma. And I like to look at kids anyway as just kind of continuing the parent's story. Um, you know, all of you guys were born here on planet Earth. And at some point, you were a manifestation of probably not just your parents, maybe your grandparents' dreams too, right? And so we kind of step in 
into a lot of that kind of karmic energy. And so obviously, um, we would have ancestors that we probably wouldn't have, we didn't meet here. We don't know that would have an interest in assisting us on our journey here now on earth in clearing these things and healing these things. And we may very well be the first kind of, I'll say, line coming out of this planet that are stepping into our role as healers that now we're going to heal all of these things. No pressure, right? Now we're going to heal all of these things. And so, you know, we didn't see that happening with our parents and grandparents in previous generations. So this is the first time in a very long time where people are, you know, having a spiritual awakening, but kind of transmuting all of this kind of karmic and ancestral stuff that people might not even understand and kind of releasing it. And we also see a lot of people that are conscious parenting. And so that's really meant to break the chains and so people can kind of do it in a new way or people are working on healing their DNA and kind of reprogramming and then going to have these you know high levels of consciousness kind of kids. So this all really does have a lot to do with you know our family and our ancestors at some point in time our journey um, these are energies they are interdimensional like I said they're right here these are these are energies that we can learn how to tune into and to ask for more assistance right maybe to assist us with our healing to give us information whatever it is that you're looking for um, for me it's always been kind of like searching um, for more information that can maybe help the collective help me understand things right whatever it is things to help me with my ascension but these are powerful energies to work with whether you can tune in and hear them or not they're around you a lot right you're loved I'm gonna get into angels next too right that's something different right so we have all of these I say entities around us now um, it's very important that we are anytime keeping ourselves safe around all of these energies sometimes we can't discern what's around us as we're learning the spiritual let go of fear I swear this was designed so that we could have a space to learn this stuff in and I know people get kind of freaked out like oh my god right like and this can be all very disorienting and a lot let go of fear um, with this any experience we ever get here is to teach us a lot like the most negative things anyone ever went through taught us so much so let go of the fear this is all divinely orchestrated um, a lot of times people get into some weird stuff when they're first waking up, but it is to teach you. It is to guide you. It is to kind of enlighten you um, with the spiritual. So I always make it clear because there's a lot of forces in the spiritual that are willing to assist humanity during this time because it's kind of a powerful time for us to even be on this planet. It's a little chaotic. We have a lot going on around us. And so I always make it clear that I am open and I am a channel to work with any benevolent entities that are trying to assist humanity or me on my path. And that can be powerful and making sure that we're only channeling good stuff. Um, so I kind of do that too. And when I'm doing this work, I just make it clear. This is your, you have your own universe, right? Start to make things more clear. How do you want things to look, right? A lot of people are listening to this voice telling them what to do all day. Um, 2020 will be where we master writing our own story and kind of laying out, you know, what we want things to look like. So these are powerful energies. Um, some ways that you can tune into these energies. A lot of people recommend asking your spirit guides their names. Um, I've been told, <laughs> I've been told the name of like one before I did this exercise and, I, and then it's not really worth me mentioning. Um, a lot of you guys know I'm more into energies than names anyway. Okay, you can meditate on it. A lot of people say you can go ask your spirit guide their name. Meditate on it. Um, if it doesn't come back right away, the answer, I always say it'll come back later. Maybe you're like at a store and they start paging a real loud name all over the loudspeaker. Or, you know, you're hearing a song and it's like the same name 10 times. Or you go out and you hear this weird thing, right? So sometimes you get the messages that way. For sure, you can ask your main spirit guides or spirit guides their names and maybe that will help you tune into their energy better. It's all about kind of learning how to connect. Um, for sure, meditation though, literally, sorry, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> for sure, meditation though, meditate on these things. Um, another way is tarot cards. A lot of you guys are getting into tarot cards. Um, that really helped me in learning how to communicate with the spiritual because it's one way to get messages and I know we always think we're so clear but we have a little more clearing work to do internally. 
So literally tarot cards will really help us in getting messages from our spirit guides. And you know, the universe is always trying to communicate with us in so many ways. And I'll get into different types of energies that are working with you now during this time. But this is one of the main, um, you know, energies working with you. I get a lot of messages from my spirit guides too. Um, sometimes they have a sense of humor. <laughs> sometimes they have a sense of humor. They've done this journey before, um, so they understand you well. They would understand you kind of outside of this place. Um, you can always use tarot cards for messages. They're really good. They also will kind of train you, like I said, um, to get into these energies. Your dreams, my favorite. Um, you can always set intentions before you go to sleep if you want to go like astral travel somewhere or astral travel at all. If you want to like meet people, meet someone, I'm sure you can just set your intention and it's like setting a dial for space travel. Um, especially once you've opened your third eye and activated your light body or your Merkaba, it kind of um, takes your dreaming and what's going on in the sleep kind of up a notch. You're able to kind of receive more information, go other places, things like that. So you can always set an intention. I have had where I've met one of my angels in a dream experience before. It was actually um, a female too, angel. And what would I wasn't expecting? I've had a very lucid experience where I was asking, um, you know, about my, the guidance that I have doing this. And I had a dream experience meeting um, some of these entities as well. So if you put out an intention, it's powerful. The universe is always, you know, dying for you to co-create something. It wants you to participate. That's why we have free will because it will be kind of boring for Source to just kind of lay everything out and we're meant to be kind of learning how to co-create as well. So dreams are powerful. We don't always remember them. Dream journaling really helps. I try to meditate every morning when I'm waking up and I can really think about anything I can remember the night before and that will help you bring back a lot of experiences. So you might not remember a lot the first time if you keep doing that every morning, right when it's fresh, right when you wake up. A lot of people dream journal. I just do like a meditation to remember. You'll get better and better at it. It's something that we have to train our mind at. When we're little kids, I always say we get convinced that your dreams aren't real and it really messes us up. So literally we have to teach and train our brain to bring back these fragments. These are other realities, other places and they're kind of very real experiences all right so your ancestors they love you they want to help you <laughs> they have a vested interest in you doing good here you're also clearing out all of their garbage this life um so you know you should be asking for more assistance as well of the spiritual and we'll get into angels too because that's one of my favorite places to go to when i pray um so your guides are powerful they love you i believe you've had the same guide from the beginning of time ever every incarnation that is assisting you um and always around you so we're beginning to tune in more and more pay attention to where you're being guided pay attention um, to the lessons that are being led and these are very like I said positive benevolent forces that are here to assist you you're not alone but we should be asking for more help too um, I know right because we're supposed to be finding kind of this place of empowerment so we do have to ask for help I think that's what people have a hard time um, dealing with too, asking for help, right? We're always fast to try to offer help to other people and a little bit slower to open up if we're the ones that need help. Um, the most powerful thing that you can do if you're going through something, making a big shift, need assistance, maybe you're just you know, going through a lot, maybe it's just a lot of energy, ask for more help. We have so much of this assistance um, around us. So you guys should probably start a dream journal. It will help you at the least start some type of meditation practice. That's what's going to really um, work on opening up the right channels and our energy to be taking in and handling more and more of these energies. The people that aren't meditating are probably going to start to feel like crap lately. Um, because it's a lot of energy coming in and that really helps, um, you know, recalibrate our energy and keep it where it needs to be with all this energy kind of flowing in. We have tons of excess energy everywhere. Um, so really start to kind of meditate, dream journaling. I'm going to be doing some type of activation to work with these energies this week as well because Reiki or any type of energy healing is really powerful for opening us up to work with these energies. So we're going to be working with your guys and your ancestors for homework. You might want to go 
ask who they are. <laughs> ask who they are. You know, you could go ahead and ask for an answer on meditation. You can go ahead in your dream state. Some people do freestyle writing, right? Things like that. I would start to ask questions for sure um, because you'll get back the answers in some powerful types of way. Oh yeah, and I'll add too. I like to think of myself as a guide. It sounds really weird, right? I like to think of myself as a guide too. That's kind of my role here too as well that I've kind of um, decided to come kind of stay and be a guide here. It <laughs> sounds really weird, right? So I'm kind of a guide too. I like to think of, an and we can have animal guides too, but right now we're talking about your main spirit guide, but that could kind of be a broad category. We can also have animal guides. A lot of you guys do. Probably every person on this feed has some type of animal guide that, you know, you would know very well. And um, sometimes these are souls that share their aspects of your own higher self. A lot of times our guides are a previous incarnation of us or an angelic kind of light being version of ourselves but you might even share the higher self and that goes for the animal um, guides as well so sometimes you know your guides can reach out to you in the physical too if you've ever had some type of angelic encounter maybe some kind of random weird kind of like encounter with people some of you guys have pets that are probably guides sent to kind of assist you Oh yeah, and I put the link for the class above as well. Um, I do start new year, so it's for the whole year for 2020 if you guys didn't sign up. 